Hi people, welcome back to Dutch Modeling. We have something else today. It's time we're going to do a uh, final reveal of something. And this is a Panzer 4 D. It's in a Dragon 3 in 1 super kit. I've been working on for the past. I'm guessing from the start of the year. So that will be 2017. And this was meant to be a uh, body build between, uh, among other ones, uh, Cohen C, Michael Campbell, and uh, H. Wood Modeling, Hendrik from Moninghausen. And uh, we did uh, all of us the, the Panzer IV. Uh, Mike, of course, finished about an eon ago. Uh, Hendrik is still working on his. And I finally f f finished mine after a, a period of wanting to throw the kit away because I didn't really f see anything doable with it anymore. I built it up, I painted it in pencil grey and I had enough of it. And I put it away for some time and uh, I, I picked it up again. Think, okay, let's do try a uh, desert scene. And well, Most vehicles come with uh, figures and I really don't like doing figures so and I fucked up the commander's cupola I got it on crooked because I didn't really check it so it's the the opening is kind of diagonal instead of in a nice line so that I got it wrong that's why I have the I had to cover the top up so you can see it so I went from a uh, for a abandoned vehicle and this is what happened to it I uh, did it uh, panzer grey and over that I used uh, the dunkel gelb, dark yellow, just in spots like they would have done the same, kind of a, kind of a uh, AFE modeling if you want to uh, give it a name. And over that I used the uh, UMP's clay wash, a mixture of sand and I think it was dark dirt and uh, just over the raw paint no clear uh, gloss or matte whatever just straight over the paint let it dry for a couple of hours and just start rubbing it off and at the same time uh, everything I rubbed off you got the particles that come off again I kept those uh, most of them are gone now but you can see it in here I kept the wash that came off, which is actually basically just clay. I used those pigments again to do all the grass, uh, sorry, grass, sorry, pigments you see on the uh, vehicle itself. I will zoom in in a bit and I will do a little of a slideshow at the end of this one. So, uh, for the base. Oh no, let's continue with the vehicle. Uh, rubber, I used Revels Aquas uh, Anthracite. I like that the most for the rubber. And that I basically the tracks are done in uh, black primer, the Amos one shot. Then the ivory, the same color I used for the base. And then I used the Vallejo Elements Rust texture. That's this stuff. Kind of semi dry brush, so I took a brush, took most of it off on the but not on a piece of paper, just on the pot, and just went over it. And then I used some of the pigments I still had left, grinded a little bit in, gave me a dusting effect. And the tracks needed to be this rusty because the tank is being abandoned. You can see here the empty fuel cans, and yeah, well, you won't be able to see it because the camera's so high. But there are fuel stains underneath here that show off that they tried to refuel it. The jerry cans went empty, they couldn't move the tank because they dislodged the tracks. The engine overheated because when they went down this incline, um, they hit a rock. This is all very soft, that's why it's sunk in so far. Hit a rock, and they uh, think the best one, they beach themselves on the back. So that actually makes contact, so it balances here on the back on the stony surface 
sunk in it was very uh, with a kind of a quicksand kind of setting here on the ro rock so the track didn't have any grip tried to move on they dislodged the track so they didn't have any grip anymore even less you can see this on this side as well it's floating a bit because the sack of the track and run dry refilled overheated the engine run dry again just abandoned the vehicle as it is it, had, it is as it is here it has been abandoned for a while you can see on the uh, the swastika it's really be battered it's discolored ripped apart to pieces by the wind and sandstorms and whatnot so it should be depicting a tank that's sitting here for three four weeks just bleaching away in the sun and there will be one thing I have going to add to this dio and that's a uh, an animal skull something of a uh, thinking of a, 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 a camel or uh, something bovine got some coming in and that's the only thing that's going to be added still probably even either here top there or maybe here because you got some spaces there so, but there will be a skull still coming that's not really the most interesting part of the dive of course and like I said for the uh, pigments you can see let's see if I can zoom in a bit without moving the camera too much nope. you can see the pigments here on top there you can see if I can turn around further let's see if you know, it's going to move now everywhere the, where those pigments for the rust on the exhaust, as you can see there. That's also a base from that uh, Vallejo rust texture. And I did a uh, product review on that line, and I really, really love that stuff. But that's the rust texture, and once that dried, I grind it in a little bit of uh, several different uh, pigments, the several different rust colors. These are just the uh, normal uh, these, just these these make pigments. Took several different colors of those. I got standard rust, old rust, new rust, light rust, and just put it on and uh, dusted it in a bit. Then again with the pigments, the uh, just grinded those in as well. Um, that's basically everything I used on the tank. I'm just going to keep it in a close up so you can see more details. Uh, you can see if I'm pretty. Myself, I'm very happy with the sprockets as you can see. And the wheels. And then you can see also see the, uh, the pigments underneath there. And that looks pretty good, if, you ask, if I may say so myself. I'm going to turn this around so you got a little feel for the uh, base. Let's see. And I can see if I can, and then see if I can show you the. No, there you can see the fuel stains. Spilled fuel. If we have to, yeah, I'm gonna take the camera down. This might, I'm gonna zoom out first. This might be a little bit wobbly because it's mounted on a tripod. It's gonna put you on pause for a second. And there I am again. And you can see there the fuel stains underneath. Let's try and zoom in. Keeping this in my hand so it won't be as steady. Yeah, the fuel stains underneath. Then the work I did on the wheels and everything. There's the other sprocket. So 
So, let's zoom that again. And that's basically why I'm gonna put you back on the tripod right away. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, uh, the base itself. Uh, what I use for the base is just a uh, picture frame or a mirror frame in this, uh, in this instance. Uh, yeah, here we go again. The most interesting shot, I think, at least. Uh, what I use for the base is uh, basically uh, a mirror frame because I like the edge, kind of that old wood it has. It's completely zoomed out. It's completely zoomed out. I'm gonna put it back a bit. The, uh, the wooden base. I liked it in combination with the, des uh, the Sahara, the desert view. I don't know exactly why, but I liked it so. And uh, underneath, I got those that that flower foam. Uh, it's called Oasis over here. Those green blocks where you stick your stuff in. That's what underneath here. Uh, over there was a little bit of wood glue, white glue, with modeling clay. And I go get mine from a local store called The Action. I don't know if you got it over there as well. And it's just this stuff. Air drying clay. Just to get a smooth surface. And over that I had... Uh, it's called Shell Sand. Schelpen Sand. And that stuff you do with, if you got canaries or so, birds at your house, it's the, the, the uh, sand you put on the bottom of your bird cage. It smells like uh, anise. I used that, uh, filtered it out with a, a, strainer, with a tea strainer. And then you got this. I got the raw products. The raw product. It sounds pretty expensive. I got the sand still here. I don't, didn't use it all. Yeah. Basically, uh, this very fine scent. Still, it still smells nice, and there are pieces of uh, seashells in there, and I just got them all out. I wonder where I put them. To be honest, somewhere up here. I strained those all out, and you got this left. And they are actually very nice size for stones, you can see. So after I uh, made a mixture of the sand, just uh, take a lot of the sand, a bit water, and a good squeeze of white glue. Uh, so it's just not a paste, just a little bit more fluid than a paste. Spread it all over. And sprinkled some of those uh, pebbles, you can see all those lighter spots. Just like these here, those are all those pebbles, spraying them back in because it's a stony desert, there will also be some smaller stones as you can see there, sprinkle them all over and then first I painted them, a, use the model air, <coughs> light brown, but this one was uh, too too dark for my taste, just didn't convey what I wanted to do. Then after that I used uh, this one. Sand Ivory, row 1001, which is the color you see now. Uh, push the tracks in, push the tracing deep because, and what you now know, it's just this little square underneath the tank here in front of here. That's just, I didn't feel that at all. It's just a centimeter of three, just the, the, the sand putty. Underneath everywhere else, you got the uh, green stuff. So, poured everything in, dispensed everything, pushed the tracks right in. That's why you got the deep hole there. Let it dry for over a week. Long live my work. Uh, came back, and then, then I had just the bare. Then I started putting in some stones, 
before it dried, to be honest, I have to say that I put those in before they dried. And those are just decorative stones, and I got an example of those. I should have an example of those somewhere close. Um, should have. Don't have, I think. Where did they go? Uh -huh. Preparation. Oh, there they are. Just deco stones. They got those pieces in the uh, sand as well. And these are very fine as you can see. Uh, I pushed them in before it dried. And then I uh, left it all to dry. Uh, after a week came back. Sprayed it all, including the stones. <coughs> left it all to dry again. Second color, spread it all, including, including the stones, let's all dry again. Uh, then on the stones, I went for a uh, wash, because they were too uniform, and I used a enamel wash on them, just to give the, 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 the texture to pop a bit, as you can see. <coughs> You can see the, let me zoom in on the stones for you then. Tape. You can see all the black smudges everywhere. That's the wash, but it kind of just pops. Uh, let it dry. <coughs> and when it really, the, 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 the wash left the stones a little bit shiny. So what I did uh, with a not too st stiff brush and a little bit of the pigment I still had left from the original uh, wash, just put it in and just rubbed it out and it got them the dull uh, look. And I'll zoom out so I can get a little bit quicker. What else do we have over here? These grasses is actually uh, old man's beard. It's this stuff without this one. Yeah. And one moment, please. So, as I was saying, these my kids came in, so I have to start over. This actually is uh, this. It's old man's beard. It's I think it's called a lichen. It grows in trees in uh, the more colder climates. Uh, this is uh, from uh, Northern Modeler. No, Northern Swede, sorry. Uh, Stefan, Stefan Whalen, he sent me this. And I know that uh, Michael Campbell has also lots of this stuff that grows just in his trees. <laughs> and uh, this here is uh, 12 millimeter static grass from Nock, and these, let me see, can you, this here, uh, these green ones, this one, that one, uh, this one, and on this side you got some couple, and here between those, these greens, these are uh, just grass tufts, come in a plate, I think also made by Nock. This is the tree here, and all the little ones you can see, or not can really can see there. And there's one, there's one, here's a big one. Is a uh, sea foam. I just used, I got a big bag, well, a pretty big bag of this stuff. You can see, it's a pretty big thingy. And I just used uh, the smallest ones, because well, it's a very arid, so i got one on the front of here as well. Nice little touch I for myself. They run it over in the front. So that's the sea foam and these timber-like things here, like this and that one. Also parts of the sea foam, looks like wood to me. And that's basically everything I used. 
I think. Yeah. And the swastika is from Reality and Scale. And it's actually a canvas printed. And I got a couple of more. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. There's one thing still incoming. Like I said, there's a animal skull coming in. And that's probably going to be somewhere here or on the back of here. Just to give it that extra arid, deadly look. There won't be any figures. So everybody probably knows by now I hate figures. So, uh, zoom out. There won't be any. And this is really the... I was going for the... It's abandoned. And that's why the trucks are so rusty. And, but there's no real rust anywhere else. Just the exposed metal. And it's just... It's just that. It's... It was a, a working tank, either got lost or anything, what else. Uh, run off the high ground, into the high ground, very soft, dusty sand in a pit, or quicksand. I don't even know if there is quicksand in a de desert, but a sinkhole. They drove in, hit a rock, and by doing that they pinned themselves down. Uh, they tried to get out again in reverse, and by that, because there is no weight on the tracks, it started to wobbling. Uh, by the wobbling it, it lost the idler, which made them lose the road wheels as well. And you can see here as well there's just no weight. You can just go underneath because they, they are floating. Because it's pinned down here. But that's the only thing that it touches. This is all free flow. And uh, yeah, that's basically my story and I'm sticking to it. So uh, I hope you like this. I haven't done a reveal in ages. It's probably because I haven't finished anything in ages. Still have a lot on the go. Just gonna sneak peek from what I still have on the go. I mean, yeah. This one's only waiting for figures. And that will be... I hate figures. Well, sticking to this. This one is 99.5% done. The only 5% is that one skull I have to do. I'm waiting on a post. We'll be here in the next couple of days and then it will completely done and we'll go on the, on the shelves. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have some comments, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and hope to see you soon. Bye bye.